and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners all over the world, welcome back to another edition of AWP, the Anything Wrestling Podcast. We are back again after a long drought. Today we have a one-on-one match. It is the Shant and Dan the Man with the Million Dollar Plan who apparently doesn't give a damn. How you doing? Yeah. Oh yeah, there's that too. I'll have to work on that. Yeah. And it's fine. How are you, Dan? It's been a while. Uh, it has been a while. Um, I'm good. Uh, living my life. Uh, Aren't we all? And that's about, that's about all I got. Fair enough. <laughs> the last time that we recorded an episode, we were reviewing WrestleMania 39. And we were coming off of, I think, one of the biggest disappointments in wrestling history... Fast forward to all these months later, we're just coming off of Survivor Series. And, and a, lot, a lot has happened. A lot like, has between happened. Between then and now, you've had the, for, the official formation of TKO with the merger of That's UFC right. and WWE and Vince McMahon fluctuating in and out of control and, what it, and not being in control and being the forefront of the sale. And I don't even know what he does right now, if anything. But it sounds like Triple H uh, himself is back with Nick Khan, basically, as yeah. the uh, forerunners of the creative process at yes. WWE, which plays a bit into what we're going to talk about today. And in the midst of all that change, the latest change, and probably, go on record to say, the biggest change is something that I don't think anybody would have imagined would happen now, let alone ever, and that is that CM Punk has returned back to the WWE. So here's the thing, is that you and I, we've never discussed our opinions about CM Punk. We've never discussed where we are with him yeah, and what, so we, what we think about him. Yeah, like, never... like, like you said, we, we, we met after he was already out of WWE. Yeah, that's right. I met you uh, in 2015 and in 2014, as we'll talk about, CM Punk left the WWE. So before we get into a timeline, we have some quick notes here. But before we get into any of this, I just kind of want to know, and I, I don't know, so I'm going to find out along with all of our audiences who are listening. What is your opinion of CM Punk, and what did you think when he was in the WWE the first time around? So uh, CM Punk obviously got sort of his kickstart um, down in ECW. Yeah. Um, and that's where you got to see the first inkling of what he could do. And he was, he was solid. Yeah. He was a good wrestler. I liked the Anaconda vice. It was a fun little submission move. Um, I don't even know if he still does it. Um, he but, does. He does. But he had the like long scraggly hair and you, you kind of looked at him and you went, eh, there's a, that's a, 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 what is it? That, that's a mid card guy. If I've ever seen him. <laughs> Um, and then he got the progression through ECW where, uh, I believe before a series of unfortunate events, he was mm. slated to become ECW champion yeah, yeah. and then that changed and John Morrison went over Yep. and eventually he got moved up to the main roster and we saw him go through Oh man, what Straight Edge Society, Nexus, Money uh, in the Bank, Money in the Bank, Best in the World, uh, World Heavyweight Champion, WWE Champion, and you got to really start to see what he was made of as he ascended further and further yeah. until we get into the summer of punk and everything like that. Yeah, and he he was a polarizing and compelling character. There were definitely still people I liked more than him when it came to the feud between him and Cena. It's not that I ever hated John Cena, but I was like, yeah, Punk's a little, he's a little bit more interesting than John Cena mm-hmm. is. So I was all for them kind of steering down that path when it happened. Yeah. But uh, as far as his tenure and my long standing opinion, I'm kind of hit or miss on the guy because I do think that there are personal elements that he's allowed to mar his legacy. Yeah. And I would love for him to prove people wrong in this new run, but we're going to have to see because we're, what, six days? Six Five, days removed? six days in, yeah, yeah. So, at the time of recording. 
Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the only time will tell. That's my take. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way. I feel like when uh, WWE CW took off, Punk was kind of like that perfect poster boy for it. Yeah, grungy, dirty. Yeah. <laughs> dirty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked him. I felt like he was more interesting than other superstars that they had there. Yeah. Um, what, you didn't like Kazarni? <laughs> um, that's funny, I forgot about that. <laughs> I mean, because, like, at the time you had Elijah Burke, you had Kevin Thorne, yeah. you had Marcus Corvon, you had all these guys. The New Blood? Is that what they called themselves? The New Breed. The, the New Breed. breed. Um, and then you had your originals, RVD and Sabu and Sandman, but it seems like... The the mid guy was like, yeah, this is a new guy, but a guy that's kind of been around because he was in Ring of Honor and kind of cutting his teeth there. Yeah. And actually, he was interesting to, to watch and, you know, his promos. And like you said, he had some really cool moves that he would do. Goes to the main roster, has a few opportunities at Money in the Bank, World Heavyweight Championship, the Straight Edge Society, the Nexus thing, the, the feud the with... The feud with Jeff, the feud with Cena. With Randy. Randy. Um, so he makes a mark, and then the, the pipe bomb, the infamous pipe bomb happens, where, you know, he's he's not happy with the way things are going. If you, he feels like he deserves a whole lot more, and other people are getting into that spot. And then we have the Summer of Punk happen. And then I... I that was such a fun time to watch. Yeah. Because... You know, I loved CM Punk before, and then when the whole pipe bomb thing took off, it was like, when is he going to come out? Like, when Raw at this time was still interesting to watch, all, all two hours, I think it was still at that time. Yeah, I don't think they jumped to three yet. No. But it was still fun to watch, but the main attraction was, when is Punk going to come out, and what's he going to say? Who's yeah. he going to attack this, you know, this week? Yeah, he was the the wrestler Paul Heyman at the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think I kind of see Punk's frustration because... So he becomes WWE champion, right? Yeah. He has the infamous 434-day reign. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even recognize it at the time, but he never main-evented one pay-per-view. Yeah, He was the champion, but he would either have third match on the card, second-to-last match on the card... And it's like, yeah, it's like you said, Cena at the time was was still the poster boy. But if we're going to make this transition, you got to start moving things around. Yeah. So that kind of builds up. And I guess he had a big problem with the, the, the medical team there. I guess they weren't looking at him. And yeah, he was working with injuries and they were kind of <laughs> turning a blind eye. Yeah. And that, that just a real quick side note, that's also a time where the actual championship started to lose some of its cre like not credibility but it's um prestige because of the fact that your ch main champion wasn't your main event yeah so being john cena triple h uh those were the real that was the real money maker yeah and it was overshadowing everything else yeah and i remember punk you know we'll we'll get into it but you know, um, so Punk does this thing, he grows frustrated, and then Royal Rumble happens, and he just quits WWE, leaves WWE, and then he goes on to record a podcast with his then best friend Colt Cabana, where he just barfs everything out and says, yeah. this is my take, this is what happened, this is why I left. I forgot about Colt. <laughs> <laughs> Cult of so did most of the people in the, in the wrestling community. Don't you mean cult of ha. personality? Get it? Um, that's, that's our first pun. Um, so at this point, it just seemed like Punk was not going to come back. Because he ran down Vince McMahon, yeah. Triple H, all these yeah, people. He, he was burning bridges with kerosene. Yeah. <laughs> and so then, okay, he leaves WWE. So now I guess I want to get your thought here. What did you think? Because a lot of people would have said that with Punk leaving, it allowed for the whole Daniel Bryan yes movement thing to to come along and for it to go off. Well, I think it I think it lent itself to fan unrest, mm -hmm. right? Because I I feel like if you hadn't had that catalyst, because I I seem to remember there were, there were a couple times, including around that feud where CM Punk, CM Punk chants were still happening. Yeah, and 
you were having the CM Punk chance overtake a lot of stuff. And the fans started to be less and less tolerant yeah. of business as usual. And so that's where, uh, like, Roman got the got the baby face, face uh, rub at the Royal Rumble for a minute when the, people were like, well, Batista. Yeah. Uh, give give us this guy. We Any, don't want the same. Anything to go against whatever plan that they WWE had at yeah. the time. And then you had, it was Randy versus Batista slated for WrestleMania. Mania. yeah. And the fans just rejected shit it. Out yeah. That. Yep. And ultimately they couldn't they couldn't not go the Daniel Bryan route. Yeah. Um it, not if they wanted to make money. Um and so that was the first kind of sign that WWE needed to stop being a Vince McMahon show and needed to be a show for the fans. Yeah. Which is what We've clamored about for a long time. Years. Is some, sometimes yeah. the best story is the, it's the most obvious story. Yeah. You don't need to do silly ass things or as a lot of uh, people on the internet who also commentate about wrestling talk about big men slapping man meat. <laughs> um, sometimes you can just take somebody who's really, really good. Like, I'm going to not, again, avoid the names, but going back to WrestleMania uh, 20... Your two, your two main events had two very, very solid technical wrestlers in those matches, and they were both stellar. Yeah. Stellar. So if you give me a technical wrestler over, God bless them, Randy and Batista, you are going to up the quality of the match. Yeah. Plus, there wasn't even a story there. No. But so some of the change that Punk was clamoring for came about just without him at that point. And yeah. I'd almost say some of it um, was A, begrudging, but also B, probably to spite him. Yeah. They were like, all right, well, you know what? He's gone. He wanted to throw a temper tantrum and go home. Well, now we're going to do some of the things he wanted without him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's my my whole take on that is I think he was a, he was a catalyst for some some of the change. He just wasn't the benefactor. Yeah. So... Punk leaves, and from the time, so I'm now I'm jumping from like him leaving to like before a AEW. Um, he keeps himself busy with writing a few comics, doing a few movies, making a few cameos, joining the UFC. Yeah, he starts to he he gets the opportunity to explore other passions he's got, which is the dream. Yeah, <laughs> and I know that a lot of people will laugh at him, point a finger, and say, this guy sucked in the UFC. He had no business being there. Fair point, but I also give him credit because it it takes it takes guts. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't either. <laughs> I wouldn't either, you know? And I mean, Punk, he's not exactly six foot four, no. 300 some odd pounds. God bless him. He's not really I, a big guy. He's not even that toned. Yeah, like, like there are people like, like McGregor. Yeah, is a he's a very competent fighter. You, whether you like his personality or not, um, he knows how to fight, and he's got he's he's got a lot of string behind his yeah. uh, uh, fighting. So he makes it work. Punk is a little sinewy. <laughs> he's a little scrawny. Yeah, in comparison, but eh, you know. It, it, you, you you do the best you can, and he did the best that he could. But, uh, yeah, then we move we move on from there. Yeah, so then that happens, and then he finally arrives in AEW. Shocking. I, then again, some people might say that they, they saw this coming, that Punk, it was no time until he joined AEW. To, to try and throw one last barb at his former employer. Yeah, and to just, like, ha- like to close out the CM Punk career. Because yeah. how much would it have sucked if his career just stopped at Royal Rumble 2014, yeah. and then that's it. You don't get CM Punk the wrestler anymore. Yeah. So he comes to AEW, and at first seemingly, not seemingly, but, like, at first, you know, Tony Khan obviously likes him, favors him. And I think in, everybody knew that in no time this guy was going to become AEW world champion. Yeah. So he becomes AEW world champion. 
But then the infamous media scrum incident happens. Now, again, we've never talked about this. So I kind of, again, want to get your perspective. Um, I don't know how fully informed you are about it or how much you know of what happened. But what do you put together from from that media scrum situation? I mean, at this point, this far removed, I'm a little foggy on some of the details. But I know that there was a whole blow up between Punk and the EVPs. Yeah. And Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks. Um, Is this the one where the dog was involved? Yeah, dog was involved, hair was pulled, people were bitten. There was it was a cat fight basically. No, um without so, cats. So you have all these people uh f- getting into it and it's yeah. it's a con- like a, not a conflict of interest, but it's a conflict of um intention, I guess, because you almost got the impression around then and you could almost argue that it's still kind of the case that the EVPs um are they 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 didn't like the fact that somebody else was coming in and impacting the amount of control they had. Yeah. Um and all Punk wa- seem, seemingly wanted to do was put on a good show and enjoy what he was doing. Yeah. And they were like, "No, you're we want you to do what we want to do." Almost as if the the Omega and Young Bucks and them were treating AEW like they were playing with their action figures. Yeah. And that's bad for business, and it is uh, it seemingly is a stoking of their own ego. I haven't I haven't been paying attention to what they've been up to since individually, but it sounds like for the most part they've either gotten quieter or there was the whole bit with the trios. I think the like seven match trios, uh, yeah, contest with them and. Uh, de- death 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 triangle? triangle yeah but i don't know i th- i think it was a clashing of egos and a clashing of uh, megalomaniacs and i admittedly would say that kenny omega and his buddies are probably a bigger problem which is what ultimately pushed cm punk out anyway yeah because punk i think he has a good mind for the business but I also think he has a little bit of an ego on him, and and so while he's, while it's res- it's admirable, that he's unwilling to take other people's shit, just like he didn't want to take take it from Vince McMahon. Yeah. Um. If if you don't know when to, if you don't know when to bite your tongue, you're going to be part of the hostile environment. Yeah. Now, granted, not to say he should have subjected himself to whatever the hell was going on over there, because it sounds like a damn circus. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think that it was, they were on a collision course from that day forward. Get it? Collision? (laughs) Um, I'll just say this, and I've said this all along and my answer hasn't changed. I had somebody ask me months ago, or very early on this year, who was in the right Mm-hmm. In that whole situation, who was in the right? And my answer back then and still now is nobody was in the right. Yeah. Not Punk, not Hangman, not the Young Bucks, not Kenny Omega. Because the whole thing was unprofessional. Yeah, it absolutely was. But I think where the biggest problem is, is number one, Tony Khan not doing anything. Yeah. CM Punk is trashing your staff. He's and, talking shit to you next to you. I just saw and those. And you're not again. doing anything. <laughs> if need be, I, I've, I've said this so many times at this point, you know, with, with different friends. If need be, grab security and say, escort him out. Yeah. Hey, punk, go to your locker room. Chill. We'll, we'll talk, talk in a bit. <laughs> yes. Um, but I think where the other problem lies is that when your EVPs are also wrestlers. Yeah. There's that ego again. Yeah. Where you're not coming at it as just an EVP. You're coming at it as EVP slash wrestler. How does this benefit me? Me. How does does it impact me? Yes. Yeah. So, and I I think that's ultimately like what you said is what drove Punk away. It was like, okay, in WWE, I had to deal with Vince, give or take what day of the week it is, Triple H. And that's it. Here, I got to deal with Tony Khan. With Omega, with the Young Bucks, with Adam Page, it's almost like it's a it's a it's a pecking order. Yeah. It's like you're outnumbered. And a boys' club. Yeah. 
So, anyway, CM Punk gets suspended. Young Bucks get suspended. Omega gets suspended. The title, half the titles on the roster get vacant. <laughs> um, and then, eight, nine, whatever have you, months later, Punk comes back on this new show, Collision, which then gets revealed is basically his show, yeah. and he gets to have creative control of who he wants there and who he doesn't want there. Yeah. Okay, all right, let's, let's, let's throw him a bone. And then All in London happens, and I'm still trying to wrap my brain around how this became a big deal, because keep in mind, I love Punk, and I love um, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Yeah. But apparently there was an incident where Jungle Boy wanted to use real glass, and Punk said, let's not do that. Yeah. Which I think is respectable, because Punk is looking out for the protection of his fellow co-workers and kind of being a veteran at that point. You yeah. kind of make those calls. Those who, who uh, ignore history are doomed to repeat, repeat it. You've it. got plenty of instances over the course of wrestling history yeah. where people used real barbed wire, real uh, glass, light tubes, um, and people get severely injured. Yeah, mankind. Yeah, you've got all of that. I, just, I saw a, a clip of an interview from Goldberg the other day where he talked about punching through the window yeah. and cutting his arm open. He broke his arm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a, it's smart for everybody's safety and longevity to not do it. Yeah. And the fact that Jungle Boy was so adamant uh, shows his immaturity. Yeah. Um, so then, you know, I guess in the pre-show when Jungle Boy is fighting Hook... You know, he kind of taps on the glass on the limo and goes, real glass, cry me a river. And it's reported that this was kind of a jab at CM Punk when he said, don't use real glass. Yeah. So it seems like after that match, there is a, I don't want to say a scuffle, but kind of a scuffle backstage yeah. where Tony Khan says that his well-being was physically threatened. Um, and then CM Punk is the first guy, I, I guess apparently they pushed CM Punk to the first match on the card, so he goes out there, and Samoa Joe, out of all people, has got to be the one to pull everybody apart and be like, stop, we're not doing this. CM Punk has his match, retains the title, and then he apparently is asked to leave the arena. Yeah. He leaves the arena, and then, I guess as soon as the next day or the day after, Tony Khan reports that I have terminated... Bill Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk. Um, so, yeah, weird, weird turn of events. Out, but, I mean, not out of nowhere. It's not an RKO. Get it? But um, it, it seemed almost... It, I mean, for all intents and purposes, collision was sort of like if uh, a couple breaks up at work and you have to transfer uh, one of your people to either a different store or a... Uh, a different shift Branch. entirely yeah. just so that there's uh, peace. Yeah. And then even that didn't work um, because you transferred them to uh, the same branch as their new boyfriend. So <laughs> it, it it was sort of a... It was never the same. Like yeah. once he got suspended and came back, I just felt like it wasn't the same because Collision, from the get-go, I said it, never really was... I felt like Collision was kind of dull. Yeah. And when CM Punk came back and cut that first promo, I thought it was subpar. And it just seemed like he was kind of coasting. Well, using using a, in a direct wrestling comparison, it's sort of like when they brought out this new world heavyweight title oh. and gave it to Seth. You were like, okay, but he's not really the champion. It's not really AEW. It's not really... What's the other show? Dynamite? It's not really dynamite. So, <laughs> it, it it was basically just, it was kind of a timeout. Yeah. For CM Punk. You go over to Collision until you can, until you can play nice with the other, the other little boys. And he just, he couldn't. And yeah. granted, some of the other little boys, one of whom is still missing, um, which rightfully so, because he, he's a child. Um, Aren't we all? Could, they couldn't play nice. But then, yeah, you jump forward to him being released, and I don't even remember how long uh, it was between that and now at this point. Three, four months? Oh, it was his 90-day non-complete. Non um, <laughs> yeah, All In was at the very end of August. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, take. right around that time. And so you, then you bring it to this point, and uh, if you want, you can tee up the, the recent events, and then we can delve into that. Yeah, so the biggest rumor going into War Games at first was that Randy is returning, and CM Punk might return to WWE. As we got closer and closer to Survivor Series, they basically gave away that Randy is coming back. So yeah. that was no longer a rumor. Now the biggest rumor in town was, is CM Punk going to return? Which, according to some of what Triple H has said since... Um, was it, last minute? It sounds like it might have been last minute and up to the point... Like, er, the early speculation was probably just people go, going... Oh, it's been ninety days. It's about that. It's about that time. It's about clobbering time. And it's in Chicago. And it's in Chicago because every time something's in Chicago, CM Punk's attached to it. Yeah. So the War Games match happens. Um, Randy comes out. They win the match. Yeah. WWE pulls the ultimate bait and switch where they zoom out. It's the entire arena. They put the copyright logo on the lower right hand corner, and. You think you think that's it? It's over. All of a sudden, that static hits. Cult of personality comes on, and the roof. Here's the thing. I'll I'll protect my guy. I'll say that Steve Austin had the biggest pops in the business, yeah. but CM Punk is up there. Well, CM I mean, Punk in Chicago specifically because yeah. it, well because his pop in Nashville on Monday was okay. Yeah, but it, it was, was decent. It, was, it wasn't I mean, that loud. Yeah, um, one can yeah. argue that your, it's your boy Steve. Solid pop every single that time. That is true. That is true. Um, but CM Punk comes out. He comes out, and I'm not just saying this just to say it because I know it's like um, I've used this this analogy before. WWE is my biological father <laughs> who 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 screwed up. Yeah. AEW is my stepdad who's always the dad that I wanted. But it seems like now my biological father has made a lot of progress. And yeah. he just pulled a big victory and I'm very proud of him. Yeah. A.K.A. CM Punk coming back. But it's one of those things where CM Punk, when he came out, I don't know like if you saw him when he was in AEW. But when he came out at Survivor Series, he looked fresher. Yeah, he looked, I had the same thought. He looked more pulled together, well-rested. Uh, he had that fresh haircut. Yeah. And, like, even his attire was, like, like he had a watch on, which yeah. he never has a watch on. He had a plain white shirt, which he always has, like, a maybe one can argue they probably didn't have the shirts printed in time, so <laughs> he didn't have anything to wear. But even, like, the pants he was wearing and the shoes he was wearing, it like was... The haircut was the most striking thing for me. Yeah. Was like, this, he should have had this haircut the whole time. A long time, time ago, yeah. <laughs> but he, he just, he looked fresh to me, like someone who's been rejuvenated, yeah. um, which is ironic because, you know, again, I think the shock is still setting in because nobody would have thought that CM Punk would ever come back. With, yeah. And with all the barbs that were, you know... Um, traded him getting fired on his wedding day, him doing that podcast, Triple H, Stephanie, and Vince, every chance they got taking a shot at him. You know, all these things that happened, you would have thought he was never going to come back. But I will say this. I never took the time to think about it. I was watching a clip of Busted Open with Mark Henry, Bubba, and the, the third guy that they do it with. And Bubba brought up a very good point that I never thought of. He's like, why was anybody shocked? Why did any, everybody think that this wasn't going to happen? Bret Hart came back to the company, which yeah. Bret Hart, you know, CM Punk, they've done what they've done. But with Bret, especially at that time, was a whole, like, you know, new layer of, like, screwing someone out of the job. Yeah, a whole le new level of pettiness. Yes, exactly. You had Bret Hart. You had Bruno San Martino. You had Warrior. You had Hogan. You had all these Jeff Jarrett. All these people that you thought would never, ever, ever come back to the WWE. Yeah. Cody Rhodes, yeah. the guy who started the competition. Who smashed the throne as a slight. Yeah. Everybody came back. And it was at that point where I was like, huh. Like, it, it kind of changed my perspective a little bit that, okay, you know, like, it's, he's not the first guy, yeah. you know, and he probably won't be the last guy. But... When he came out at Survivor Series, I don't know if you saw it live, if you catched it after the I, fact. I caught the replay. I was at work. Um, <laughs> I will just say this. Um, but as soon as, but even like I knew he was, I knew, I had already heard he was coming out. But as soon as they did the back out, I was like, ah, oh, yep, 
this makes sense. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I kind of got spoiled in the most unorthodox way. Yeah. So I have stayed offline that entire day because we were going to catch it at nighttime. And then the problem with Peacock is that you can't – you have to wait for the entire feed to finish Before for them to post it, it and then you can go and watch it from the beginning. Yeah. So as we were waiting, we kept on like backing out of it and going into it to see if it had, if it had done it. And I noticed when I scrolled down because we were kind of looking for something to watch. We didn't want to go on the internet to avoid spoilers. Peacock puts a playlist together and it says best in the world. And it's all CM Punk clips. And it was at that point where I'm like, they would never do this. They would never give CM Punk any type of spotlight. Yeah. So then it was obvious at that point that <laughs> CM Punk had returned to WWE. Yeah. But you still couldn't believe it. You almost felt like there was a catch. Like yeah. it, 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 you, you had to see you it. You had to see it to believe it. <laughs> so my question to you now, he comes out at Survivor Series. Yeah. You said it yourself that you agree with me. He looks fresh. He looks brightened up. He looks rejuvenated. What went through your mind when you saw CM Punk come back? And I know there was Seth Rollins boiling in the in the background. Drew McIntyre walks to the back minutes before he walked out. What did you think when you saw CM Punk back? What was your initial reaction? Where were you in this whole thing? All right. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> that was my initial reaction was sort of a it was sort of a shrug. Like shrug my shoulders real high and go, oh, okay. If you guys want, if you guys want to screw around like this, we'll see how it turns out. Um, is that coming from a place of this is going to be bad, or was it like? Well, knowing the knowing the malice he had for the company and how, I can't even think of the word. How explosive the exit was yeah. from AEW, like the series of events, um, you kind of go, where is this guy at mentally? Yeah. And if he's coming in, is he in a healthy spot or is he going to come in and start ruffling feathers immediately? And whether WWE is taking advantage of that from a storyline perspective and everything we've seen so far is in fact a work or if some of it is legitimate and people are pissy because of what they're now anticipating is basically going to be a replay of what AEW, AEW did, which is, hey, come on in, we'll give you a belt. Um, we'll see. But taking a couple days, like, I mean, then you had Monday, and then having a couple days to kind of let it breathe, it, it does show a lot of personal, if you could, Say, say it that way a lot of personal growth for the company that they put the things aside they brought they invited him back the fact that, and the fact that he was comfortable enough because I think they had that they, they had to have like made it very clear to him that Vince doesn't have any real tangible power anymore so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Because I almost feel like going off of... And this is going to get dark for a second. Going off the stepdad example. I think Vince was the stepdad that beat him. <laughs> and he was like, I'm never coming back to this house as long as that man is here. And the fact that now he's he's gone... Uh, had to have given him that peace. Because I don't... Like, I don't... I, I feel like at some point in this whole series of events since the beginning he I, I feel like at one point he straight up said there's no amount of no amount of money that could lure me back to that company and maybe that was just him dealing with the pettiness but also i think vince going off of the montreal screwjob thing that happened because of his pettiness yeah vince mcmahon is the oldest child i know fair <laughs> Because, and, and like, the smallest slight makes him go sit in the corner and pout and then want to take, uh, take revenge. And I think that the CM Punk will never be back in WWE thing was probably rooted mostly in him. Because he still had the say on what happened. Yeah. And he would have been like, Triple H could have come in and gone, so, uh, listen Vince, uh, I got, I got an idea. What if we call up Phil and we say, hey, Phil, we've got some great stories for you. 
uh, come on back to WWE and we'll we'll slap the uh, new World Heavyweight title on you. Vince would have put that shit to bed real fast. Real fast, yeah. But now with Con, <laughs> the other Con, <laughs> and Triple H uh, at the helm, it seems like they said something or did something or a combination of things that made him go, you know what? Maybe I've been, and especially now, hindsight 2020, he now has seen what what the alternative can be. And he went, that place is a nut job. AEW is a, for him. Yeah. yeah. That place is a mess. Well. And so now he has something to compare his previous experience to. And maybe on some level he's like, maybe it wasn't that bad. Yeah. You don't know (laughs) what you have until you lose it type of thing. A few points that I'm going to mention is that I I was telling my friends, I'm like, because like they were like, what happened? And why did he leave AEW? I, they, they were more of like on the AEW side of thing. Like, why couldn't it work out over there? Yeah. And I kept on, I was like, guys, CM Punk did not have a regular contract negotiation. Yeah. This wasn't a, hey, Phil, okay, this is how much you'll get yearly. If you agree, just read the paperwork and sign on the dotted line. Mm-hmm. No way in hell that this was a regular contract negotiation. Yeah. So I, and I think I heard somewhere that, he spoke to Triple H for about 30 minutes yeah. and they like verbally agreed. They're like, this is what we're doing. This is how it's going to be. Are you in? Yeah. But the thing is, is that, yeah, look, I have always said that there is blame on both sides. Yeah. WWE had its role. CM Punk had his and why everything worked out the way that it did. Um, even I, I think, I know, I don't know if you, maybe you saw, but even AJ Lee was backstage. Yeah. She, she was, uh, hugging Bailey and mm-hmm. Punk had snapped a photo of it. I know. So, and I know he name dropped her and said, she sends her a lot. Of- yeah. <laughs> um, and the thing with WWE and the one part that I love, but I kind of hate is that when you're on their bad side, they essentially Stevie Richards, you Yeah. They don't mention you. They erase you and everybody connected to you. But the second that you come back, this past week, the amount of clips that have been CM Punk's uh, timeline uh, in WWE, CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar full match, CM Punk versus John Cena full match, a uh, full segment promo of his return. Oh, they, they, they're hyped to, to be peddling his shit again. <laughs> they're, they're, they're putting it all over the place. Yeah. And so my whole thing is like, I'm glad that we can reach to a place where, okay, I was wrong. You were wrong. It was, he said, she said, they said, okay, let's put all that behind us. Let's try to work this out because there is money to be made. And so that brings me to the next night after Survivor Series, which we kind of sort of talked about here and there. He cuts this promo and I'll go ahead and I'll express my sentiments and I'll pass it over to you. Um, again, I was just waiting. I was waiting to see when's Punk going to come out. What's he going to say? What's on his mind? Yeah. I, I, I was at home and I put, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll pull up the live stream hoping. And maybe this is my, my, uh, naivety hoping they were going to just start the show with him. With him. Because to me, that made more sense. You start the, and, and like you do something to like put him at the end too, but you start the show with him. In order to get people to tune in, maintain the audience, and then yeah, yeah you you kick it down the down the line. And as soon as Randy's uh, theme hit, I went, "All right." I gave him a minute and a half, and I shut off and had to leave. <laughs> Which I mean is kind of fair because Randy did just come back after eighteen months, so I feel like that was still a, a bit of a hook to kind of keep the yeah. audience intact. But but I, he wasn't the marquee. The he marquee wasn't the main course. Punk. Yeah. So then CM Punk comes out and okay, he's, you know, now he's dressed in his, his actual apparel. Um, he comes to the ring and he cuts this promo. A few solid points here and there. Um, AJ sends her regards. Um, the last line that was said, not into the microphone. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. Um, everybody welcomed me back with open arms. Not everybody. Um, so like there were the highlights. Yeah. But then when he got into, I'm home, I missed you guys, yeah. I love you guys. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that all of it was artificial because he kind of had a point where the audience never forgot. Yeah. 
even when he was out of WWE and there was no association, going back to your point earlier, segments that had nothing to do with him. Yeah. You heard the fans chanting CM Punk. Yeah. So that part of it, okay, I'll give him. But then this whole thing about I'm home, I missed you guys. So the the I missed you guys thing I I can forgive, because it, it's kind of like when when uh, when Bray came back, right? yeah, and Bray did the like heartfelt the initial heartfelt promo and he was like I was in a dark place you guys were there on Twitter online yeah. everywhere, letting me know you still cared letting me know that you still loved me and that I meant something to you and that's what kept me going yeah and I think that the fans are. The main thing for him. The fans are why he went to AEW in the first place. Yeah. I'm sure there's a little bit of the bug that he missed wrestling because he did it for years. And I, yeah. I, uh, a lot of these people wrestle for 480 years because it's something that they, they enjoy doing. Yeah. Shit. If I, if I were able to do like fight scenes in a movie all the time, I did stage combat in college. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. And that's what I, that's, that's the biggest thing I like about, uh, that's the second biggest thing I like about, uh, <laughs> professional wrestling. The first one is good story. Storytelling. Yeah. But, um, I can forgive that one because I, I believe that the I'm home. I heard and I went, that's out of character. Yeah. That has to be Phil, and that has to be, there has to be something that they said or offered him. Yeah. That made him go, this is my home. Even if it's, like, this is me writing uh, f- fan fiction, but I could almost hear Triple H going, listen, here's the plan. We're going to put that place out of business. And Phil went, sign me up. <laughs> and that could be all that it was and he was like look now I'm, at, I'm back in the big leagues I don't have to deal with with stepdaddy I'm, I'm here I'm here to I'm here to ruffle feathers in the best possible way but I don't know I, I agree with you that, that that one felt a little weird knowing everything we've heard from him in the past and all of his grievances yeah. about WWE. So there has to be something on the horizon that he feels really comfortable now, making that switch. People have also mentioned that maybe there he's doing this intentionally yeah. so that maybe a Seth Rollins or insert person here will come out and say, You're a hypocrite. Yeah. And that's gonna ignite a you know, a feud. Yeah. Um so now that we've talked about the promo, we've talked about the return, and we come down to what is where does the future take What's CM next? Punk? What's next? Um, I was kind of... And like, see, again, this is the part where I say in WWE, they either don't pull the trigger or they pull the trigger when it's too late. Yeah. I'm going to go back to what I started this episode with. The last time we recorded was WrestleMania. Yeah. And we were very bummed out that Cody Rhodes didn't go over now where that kind of becomes a problem for next year's mania but to an extent you can salvage is the fact that wrestlemania is two nights yeah if wrestlemania was one night that's it yeah you would have a big problem on your hands because you either have to put this guy in your main event or that guy or that guy (laughs) or Um, you'd have to replace that guy with that guy yeah and then everybody would be pissed yeah (laughs) so but here's the thing that's the saving grace is that it's two nights so i was kind of thinking about this and it seems like i i've already seen people uploading graphics online where it seems like everybody is leaning towards that slowly we're gonna lead to punk versus seth rollins main event for night one for the world heavyweight championship yeah and then night two, you'll have the grudge match between Roman and Cody, which hopefully this time we pull the trigger, we finish the story, yeah. and there you go. But now, one thing I think we are gonna, I think we're gonna lose out on, which is not necessarily like I mean, I would, I would expect it to go the way that uh, one would expect, but one thing I think we are gonna miss out on is being able to do the whole. 
CM Punk 434 day title reign uh, talking shit to Mr. Three Years. Mm. Well, I'm not saying it would have been the most exciting thing. I'm talking from a storytelling standpoint or from a, a feud uh, foundation. Because you could have Punk be like, look, man, I wrestled more matches in 434 days than you've wrestled in uh, 1,112 or whatever the hell we're on. And it, it could be a compelling story leading into a match. But the only place where that makes sense to, to end is at, a, is at a pay-per-view. And it's wasteful if you do it at, like, Elimination Chamber. You can't. You, you can't. can't. Because punky would, pun, punky. Punk would either have to go over or you'd hurt his stock going immediately into WrestleMania. Or the alternative is that Roman goes over again oh, and everybody loses their damn minds. And we see, we go, actually, maybe WWE doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> Here's the thing. Last year, no, last year, this year, um, the question was, if not Cody, who else yeah. to dethrone Roman? Because Cody was arguably, like, that would have been the story. This guy who started the competition makes his way back, gets into that, that top spot, and then ends the title reign of the prepackaged poster boy yeah. that WWE has handpicked for the last decade yeah. to be their poster child. But then you look at it now, you're like, if not Cody, yeah. now there's CM Punk. Yeah. Which can you imagine if <laughs> you, you kind of think about it now and it's mind boggling, this guy who everyone thought would never have anything to do with the WWE ever again, yeah. comes back Fulfills his destiny by main eventing a WrestleMania, and on top of that, is the one to dethrone Roman Reigns. Yeah, can you imagine? But then it's like, okay, if we do that, it, it's gonna well, it's gonna leave a bitter taste. People are gonna be like, all right, cool, Roman's done, and <laughs> and Cody to an extent, his yeah, because because what like I like you said, you've seen the graphics. It's CM Punk versus. Rollins and it's Cody night one versus and then Cody versus Roman. Do you night swap two? them and do Rollins versus no, Rhodes? No, well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not proposing that, but I'm saying like, what do you do with that? Yeah, I know. Like, it's have them fight, and the finishing of the story is for the World Heavyweight Championship, where he beats Seth for the fourth goddamn time. <clears throat> eh. No, Cody need Cody needs to beat Roman. Yeah, Cody needs to beat Roman, or we've wasted our time. Punk can do whatever the hell he wants. Except for that. <laughs> that, is the, that is the one thing that should be off limits. For now. Well, I mean, not the, not, not the belt. He can shit. Uh, Punk can beat Cody for the title sometime down the line if he, if he has to. But Punk should not beat Roman. After last year, it is a waste of everybody's time yes. if Cody doesn't take the belt off Roman. Just because we, we built up to it last time, and now the natural finishing of the story and the who we're cooking filet mignon uh, leads to that. And, and see, this is, this is the biggest problem, is that had they... Here's the thing. If they pulled the trigger this year, and let's say if hypothetically Cody was your champion until WrestleMania yeah. next year. Yeah. WrestleMania 40, you would have Cody Rhodes... As the champion mm -hmm. versus CM Punk. Yeah. Tell me a bigger match than that. Yeah. Nice and easy. <laughs> the, the, the two AEW returns. The, the two guys that Climbed arguably the were omitted yeah. for the better part of a decade yeah. are you, is your main event picture at WrestleMania. Yeah. That's like, I don't know how the hardcore AEW fan base feels about, oh, dude, it's nasty. about Cody at this point, but. Um, yeah, I mean, the people who aren't a bunch of toxic little fanboys um, would probably jump at that match. I know I would. Because I think, I think Punk, I, have they ever, did they ever cross paths? I don't remember if they did. Cody and Punk. If they did, I feel like he was Stardust. I don't, th no, because Stardust happened after Punk left. Did he? Yes. Well, I don't think, well... Yeah, I feel um, I feel like they I feel like they were like uh, I think if they did, it was probably when Cody was like dashing Cody Rhodes and Punk was maybe like 
It would have been a random, a random one off, like a Raw one-off. SmackDown yeah. type of deal. But yeah, they and then and then they crossed like ships in the ships on the sea yeah. in AEW because Punk came in after Cody was gone, didn't he? Or was there a very very short crossover? But I don't think they they interacted. I don't think they did. Yeah, I don't think they did. I don't know. We we would have to look it up, and I admittedly don't. Bottom line, anyway, it's so. it's it's not a Randy Orton versus John Cena situation where yeah. it's happened. It yeah. hasn't, as yeah. at least in this capacity of both men being main eventers. Yeah. But I guess or that that would just be a great main event for one of the other big four, like SummerSlam. You, yeah, you could. <laughs> Not to say you should unify the belts, but hell, okay. you, if if you go with the matches that are projected or rumored for forty, and you have those two win, they could face off champion versus champion at something. Yeah, and people would still lose their mind. Or you don't, and you hold it off till forty one. But no, I there there there's boiling it back down. There's a lot of potential, a lot of promise from this return. And from the current landscape and structure that we're seeing start to fall into place in the new post-TKO WWE. But what would you like to see? I guess I kind of took it over with the idea of night one, night two of WrestleMania. But like, if, if Triple H came up to you and said, here's the, here, here's oh, the you book. Didn't, you didn't want to try and <laughs> one-up my voice? I, I, I can't. I'm not, I'm not good with impersonations. Um... Or even if I did, I would probably pull a rock, but I'd be like, so, uh, what do you want to book? Uh, um, but let's just say if Triple H came up to you and yeah. said, it's all yours. How are you booking CM Punk upon his return? Yeah. What would you do? At least from now until, say, hypothetically, a WrestleMania or SummerSlam of next year, how would you book him? Um, I'll tell you one thing. I would not want to see him as the leader of Judgment Day. Um... <laughs> I I think that I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing him feud with Judgment Day in the capacity of ending Judgment Day. Like they should be fall they should be falling apart. Quick uh thing about that, uh I don't know if you I don't know if you follow him on social media, but Punk uh put up a snapshot of when I don't know if you've seen it, but when yeah, the Dominic thing. When yeah. he was younger and Ray had his whole family in there. Yeah. Um so he put a snapshot of that on his story. Maybe I think that'll keep him busy until the rumble. Yeah. I think like in my heart of hearts, I think Punk's winning the rumble, goes Punk. to Mania and faces Seth. Chooses Seth, yeah. But go ahead. I think that that's a perfectly valid way to go. I because I can't even think of somebody to take the the like. No, I wouldn't go that way. I can't think of somebody to take the belt off Seth early. Um, and then oh, have, before Mania. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. It seems like under the Triple H regime. Long title reigns are a thing. Yeah. You have Roman. You have Gunther. Seth has won it in the middle of this year. Yeah. I don't see him losing it until Mania. Yeah. If I'm being honest. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with that because I like the concept of giving a a title reign time to breathe. Yeah. But I also miss the the days. Not to to do it for no reason. But I miss the days of a one-month reign where somebody wins it and uh, then it just... Transitionary champions. Yeah. Um, But, no, I think that that's probably the smartest way and the most likely thing for them to do is to keep him busy with somebody uh, in the... Hell, in the Rumble... I don't know who you'd necessarily have in the last four at that point, but you'd probably... Well, I, Drew... I, I, you know what I think you could do? I don't. Yeah, I don't know if Drew will still be connected to Judgment Day at all at that point. I could see your last five being Finn, Damian, Drew, Cody, and Punk. For, for Royal Rumble? Rumble? For oh, Rumble. okay. Um, and so I, I could see that being your last five. Because then that lets you plant that seed of, oh, what if CM Punk and Cody uh, engage? And you could have this feud up to the Rumble with Judgment Day, where then it's like, well, we're going to stop you, CM Punk, from ascending to the top of the mountain. And he, then you have like him and Cody squash that. And I could see those two being your final two. Because I yeah. think that that's kind of going back to when uh, Batista and Cena were the last two and eliminated themselves uh, together. 
um, they ended up being the main the the challengers at Mania. I also kind of had a theory that maybe Seth costs Punk the Rumble match. Maybe. Because Cody's in the Rumble match. He's declared himself officially. Yeah. Maybe you have him be a two-time winner. You yeah. know, he wins it back-to-back. Um, but, so, yeah, I There's mean... a couple ways for it to go. But I, th- I think the, the logical thing is what's being rumored. Yeah, um, and what's so unique, at least now, is I know for a fact that you always have advocated how in the Attitude Era... You had like your your top six main eventers that you can s- intertwine and swap at any time. We kind of have that now, if you really we're, think we're about it. We're getting there because yeah. we have a Cody, we have Punk, we have Sammy, we have Seth, we have Drew. Yeah. God bless him, Jey Uso. <laughs> what main event as a nickname doesn't sell him on, to sell him for you? Um, and then you got Roman for now. Um, but it's it's a unique time because you and I, I feel like if Kevin Owens stock hadn't fallen, yeah. he would have been in in that list. But it's a unique time because I think Cody brought it up where he's like, never have we had so many baby faces that the audience cheers. Yeah, because now the style is anti heroes heels are getting cheered and the bad guys are getting booed out of the building. Yeah, but we're at a point where it seems like that paradigm has shifted yeah, where we're shifting a little bit back toward to the old, how it the old used style. to be yeah yeah so and I, I think i think that that comes from not making them caricatures i think by making them well well developed well-rounded yeah people you go i want to root for cody yeah i want cody to be successful we'll see i want cm punk to be successful um i want Sammy to be successful, Jay to be successful, now that he's gotten away from his abusive family. There, there's underlying things that make you care about these people. Randy. Randy. He's come back from the thing. That's why people liked Roman in the first place when he came back from the leukemia thing. They were like, that's a success story. Yeah. I'm behind this guy. That flipped the book. People who were booing the hell out of him when he was being forced down our throats came around and they went you know what he's gone through a lot of shit i don't mind him as a person i I, I hope he's successful yeah um luckily we just have this from people being people as opposed to health problems (laughs) but so i mean so you're fully behind the um the thing that's kind of making its rounds right now the idea that's penciled in, in in wrestling fans' minds is that night one and night two is Punk Cody taking their rightful places as champion. To quote myself from earlier, sometimes the best story is the one that makes the most sense. Yeah. No, I adamantly agree. Um, we'll see where things go. We're wrapping up on 2023, and I'm sure in the blink of an eye, 2024 will be here as well as WrestleMania, and we'll see what happens at that time. But I want to say it seems promising, but we'll only have to see. So any final thoughts on CM Punk, his return, his promo, where he's going, how you see it? Any final thoughts? What do you... I mean... What are you hoping for? What are you, what are you, what's, what's your outlook? I'm willing to give it time yeah. to play out. And I hope that he's grown as a person where we don't see a rehash or start to hear stories about him going out of his way to step on people. He should be here to make money and make the product better. Yeah. That's his, that's all of these guys' job is show up, make the product as good as it can be. And should he have to deal with uh, abuses? No, should the company be better now to where they don't do that? Fingers crossed. Yeah. But I'm I'm more than happy at this point to let it breathe. I haven't gotten excited about it at this point, but I'm willing to to watch and see what happens. Do you have a dream match? I think the closest thing is probably the eventual uh, meetup between Cody and and Punk. I just think that that would be a great marquee match. Yeah. I think people. I think that the current fan base would would be hyped about that. Definitely. Yeah. I uh, I've been coming across. Uh, 
blogs that are insinuating that WWE is apparently confident and kind of pushing for Punk and Austin. Yeah, I saw, I saw that too. Because um, like 10 years ago, that was the big thing, you know, because WWE 13 was coming out at the time and that was kind of like intertwining with the real product. We saw Steve Austin have his final match last year. He, he I mean, it was pretty good for the most part. But I think he had even expressed interest in having this match. Hadn't he? Austin, Austin? or Punk? Um, I thought there was at least one point post-Punk leaving because Austin's never been one to shy away. Where yeah. He was sort of like, yeah, Punk, Punk was, a, was a good guy. I'd love to face off with him. <laughs> that, my Austin's not good. But um, I, I think at one point it was penciled in. Yeah. That they were going to do this at Mania. But I, I don't know if Austin maybe was still nursing his injuries or if it just it, it didn't line up in the cards. But um, there is the bias in me that says, let's do it tomorrow. And then there's a part of me that's like, I, I don't know. I, like, well, I, I, I feel like based on the way we're starting, that makes sense for 41. Whether we can get there or not is a completely different story. Because someone had brought it up to me that, you know, Punk is... Was it you? Who was it? It was someone that brought it up. Punk is apparently 40... He's up there. Six? And he's 47 not, years and he's, old? And he's not not fragile. <laughs> but as we saw at the end of apparently the Apparently, he signed a multi-year contract. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I thought this was going to be like a part-time... Um, maybe six month, one year deal, and then I'm out of here. But it seems like he has signed a multi year deal where he is gonna be wrestling and he's gonna be an active part of the product. So when you kind of put that in there, you're like, okay, does that increase the chance of maybe somewhere down the line, an Austin versus Punk, uh, match the probability of that taking place? Because, like, I know that Austin, you know, he's got some age on him, too. But, I mean, it was a year ago that he was in phenomenal shape and had a great match with Kevin Owens. You know, so, uh, I mean, I don't know. what one. I mean, I want to say, like, let's not hold our breaths for it. But when you look at everything that's happened in the WWE over the last 18 months, never say never. Well, on that note, out of curiosity, um, according to this this page... Um, from October 2023. The median age of stars competing on Raw is just over 36. And on SmackDown, it's just over 35. So the... Like, the the median age of the wrestlers has gone up. Yeah, because before it was... Early twenties. Yeah, you you were looking twenty to twenty, like twenty to twenty eight. Four. Yeah, it was even, like yeah, and twenty eight is like you're you're now Randy's, John's, them. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it is obviously stretching their longevity. Yeah. But it's also the style has changed, taking care of your body has changed, not doing drugs other than weed, <laughs> has changed. No chair um, shots. Yeah, um, we talked about that. That's probably part of why Punk was so adamant of no real glass. Yeah. Because he wants to keep wrestling for three years. Yeah. Um, but so I think that that's where we're at. We're in a different age. We're in a different yeah. time where you can have somebody who, L.A. Knight, you can have somebody who's in their, in their early 40s be your top star still. Yeah. Because they have greater longevity than back in the yeah. day. Yeah, so I mean, it seems like with Punk coming back, I mean, the possibilities at this point are endless. We don't yeah. know how things are going to go. But going back to your point, you're absolutely right. Sometimes the most obvious story is the one that you should tell. Yeah. And not try to pull a swerve or sweep the you know the rug under the, under the fans' feet at the last second. Like, just give it to them on a silver platter. Because then at that point... WrestleMania becomes a success. You make your money. Everybody's happy, and you know it, well, if I go to a fi- if I go to a fine dining restaurant and order a steak and you bring me a hamburger, I'm gonna be pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it it, it kind of goes back to when we were talking about Mania. Like we actually were thinking about going to Mania this this last year, yeah. and by the time it was done, I think we were all kind of like, "Who saved that? Money. Save that money?" <laughs> yeah. So. 
And again, that becomes a byproduct of had you pulled the trigger on Cody, yeah. now it would have been easier. Yeah. Because I, I, I would have no problem with Cody versus Punk um, for the title at Mania. Yeah. No problem with it. I, w- I would have Punk win at that point. Yeah. You know? But again, it's like, with WrestleMania being two nights, you have just barely enough. You have that little window to be like, you can still do it, but you got to put the pieces in the right place and not screw it up. So we'll see where it goes. Um, my opinion on Punk, I've always loved him. Um, has he done wrong? Yes. Has he screwed up? Yes. Does he have an ego? Yes. Does he have potential anger issues that he has to work on? Yes. But I think at the end of the day, they keep on saying it. And it's not a... When they said this with Johnson, I felt like it was shoved down your throat moment. But when they say it with Punk, it's very natural where he's polarizing. Yeah. Wherever Punk goes, people are going to talk. Yeah. And that, call me crazy, that's what you want. Yeah. You don't want a wrestler who shows up and everyone's like... Controversy creates cash, as Mr. Bischoff used yes. to say. So, with all that said... I'm hopeful. I believe in second chances. Um, in WWE, there's never a better feeling than when something comes full circle. Yeah. And like you, you're at a point where you tell yourself, I never thought this day would come. But long and behold, here we are. And it's come. Yeah. So CM Punk has one last chance to prove that he is truly the best in the world. Remember, he's not here to make friends. He's here to make money. So anyway, guys, uh, there you go. We just wrapped up another episode, gave our opinion of the career of CM Punk, the person, all the controversy surrounding it, and where we think he's going to be potentially in a few months' time at WrestleMania. I trust that by then we will do a preview or maybe even a review episode of WrestleMania. We might even have a few episodes before then. We'll just have to see how things work out. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Let us know what you think about CM Punk, the wrestler, the man, the human, his return to WWE that not any of us could really see coming, but it did. Let us know what you guys think. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you all next time.